Mrs. D6 all natural here. It's been a while since I've been on the camera. I hope everyone is doing well in lieu of COVID-19. You're staying sanitized, keeping your homes disinfected, and uh, keeping your families healthy, as I'm trying to do the same here. So this is a video that's going to offer a tip when there's scarcity uh, in your stores. As we all have seen the pictures of the shelves being minimal and just completely bare. So I was in the store shopping a few weeks ago and I noticed that there was no ground beef or ground turkey. And I thought, hmm, what would the virtuous woman do? And since I try to keep that in mind and want to be virtuous, um, I noticed the beef stew meat and I thought, hmm, I could grind that. So I went back. Looked through the packages that they had and picked up a few packages. Um, it was quite expensive. Uh, wasn't real fond of that, but again, we're dealing with scarcity. So a tip on top of a tip. If you are purchasing, if you were able to purchase ground meat as you normally would, then great. But one of the things that I would say, um, I was kind of... I, had start, I was back in the store because I was thinking about, you know, if we're home two weeks or if we're home three weeks or if we're home 30 days, do we have enough food for 30 days? And if you stretch it or you make meals, then yes, you likely would have enough with what you've purchased and what you have. So the point that I'm getting to with that is, if you have ground turkey or ground beef and or even in some cases ground chicken and instead of making burgers you made taco or spaghetti or meatloaf um, or dirty rice this would allow you to stretch that amount of that ground meat because you're crumbling it and you're eating you're, you're getting more out of it versus if you take a couple pounds of ground meat and you make burgers you've got a larger amount a bigger serving and therefore it decreases the amount that you're going to have left over or how you're able to stretch it so i hope that helps somebody so in lieu of all of that that's why i'm doing what i'm doing so i've got three packages of stew meat here it is angus premium choice beef uh which is a better cut and that is angus that should be good there's a little bit of marbling, which is, gives me a little bit of fat. Not a whole, whole lot, but it should be enough. So I won't really try to focus it in because I've had some trouble with that. So it was $5.48 per pound. This one is $2.16 per pound, total $11.84. This one was $2.20. I'm sorry, not $2. This was two pound, 2.23 pounds, $12.22. $12.22. Uh, per package and then this one was 2.20 pounds and it was $12.06 per package so um, quite expensive but again we're dealing with scarcity and what I do with it will maximize and I'm not going to do a breakdown of what that will be per meal per plate per person all that kind of stuff because um, that ain't me so I'm visual so I got it so what I'm going to do to try and keep this video from being super long I'm going to pause and wash my meat under cool water. I'm going to put it in my grandmother, Jess, my grandmother Jessie's mixing bowl. And then I'll come back when I'm ready to get started. All right. So here is a full bowl of ground. I'm sorry, not ground. Here is a full bowl of the beef stew meat not quite seven pounds but it's over six pounds so we are going to go ahead and get started i just want to get behind the camera a little bit here and just make sure that you can see what's going on all right here we go okay so i'm going to use my kitchen aid artesian in caviar it's the color for those who care <laughs> And I, this is how I store my KitchenAid. It's always on the counter. Um, and I have a cover that I use over it. But I store right now all of my tools 
inside of the bowl. So we don't need those for now. And then we have our bowl. So I'm going to go ahead and take it off. And here is what is going to do our grinding. So I hope you can see this. I'm going to move the meat to the side here for a second. So basically, I also store, I'm a functional, what do I say? I am a organized mess because I can have a mess, but it's an organized mess, if that makes sense. Um, so I have the blade and then I have the size of the grinding and I'm going to use the larger one. So I'm going to set the smaller to the side. I'm going to insert the blade. This is the grinder. If I didn't show that well, I'm going to put the blade inside. I'm going to place on the grinder attachment, screw it on just hand tight. And then on the KitchenAid, and I know a lot of you already know this, but for those who don't, or if you, if you're not a baker, but you do cook, because I'm not really a baker, I'm a cook. And I got the KitchenAid because I wanted to learn to bake. And that has done this. So at any rate, I just had to have this thing and now I have it. So, but if you've thought about it, it's not just for baking and they have tons and tons of attachments. So you take the nose off, nose cover off, and I'm gonna place it inside the cabinet because I don't want to lose it. Organized mess, remember that. And so I'm gonna insert this inside and there's a little screw here that tightens it. And again, it's just hand tight and I kind of give it a little tug just to make sure that it's in there secure. I'm gonna lock my neck down so that it doesn't lift. So you have a lock and an unlock. So I'm gonna lock it down because I don't want it lifting on me. This here, I don't know the proper name for it right now, but this is what you use if you need to press the meat down inside. A finger saver. Uh, okay, finger saver. Um, <laughs> it says push food. So it's a finger saver push food, turn to remove food, grinder, cap, yeah. Anyway, yeah, you push it through the hole. So I'm sorry if this doesn't give you um, all the details, but if you have a question, I will try to answer comments, but don't get mad if I don't, because again, I haven't been on here in a while. So you gotta give me a little bit of a repass, or not a repass, um, give me a pass on that. <laughs> all right, so I've got it plugged in and I've got my meat. My hands are clean. I have my dish water here. Whenever I'm dealing with any type of raw meat, I always run a sink of hot, soapy water with bleach. The mister likes a splash. I don't care for a splash. I buy it from Sam's, I buy it three to a case because I use it. So I pour some bleach inside because just the idea of salmonella or whatever when you're cooking, no, I don't, that's a big deal to me. So at any rate, my hands are bleach soaked clean. The meat has been washed in cool water and it is in uh, Grandma Jessie's mixing bowl. So I kind of pull my KitchenAid back a little bit until I get started so I can judge how close it needs to be because it's going to come out of the front. So I'm going to tiptoe over here and I'm going to put it on, I'm going to put it on two is my speed. So I'm just going to start putting the meat over here. I don't know if I need to lift the camera off. We'll see here in just a second. So I'm just going to grab a semi handful here. And there's a little holding spot as well as uh, the hole. So I'm going to start kind of dropping a few pieces down in the hole. And this is where a little pusher comes into play. You may see it start to come out of there. I hope you see it coming out of there. Can yes. you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. I may have to turn it up a little bit. And I'm going to just sit some up here in the tray. And I may need my, my pusher. Finger saver. These chunks are kind of big. My what? Finger saver. My finger saver. I'm going to put a few more pieces in there. You don't want ground up finger. I don't. I really don't. And yeah, I think I can move my bowl a little, a little closer too. Because it'll, it'll, I know whenever I do the ground turkey, 
it kind of sputters a little bit and I don't want the splashes so that's why I have to kind of move my bowl to kind of see what's going on. I think the speed matters as well. So I'm gonna, this is slow. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm pushing it down. You need to speed it up. And I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. But before I touch my knob, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna lay that there. I'm gonna wash my hands here in my water. And I'm gonna bump it up one speed here. And then I'm gonna push. It's pretty, guys. I pull the camera over here just a little bit and let you look at it a little closer so you can see what's happening. And hopefully, I can fast forward um, this. I know the uh, YouTube world has changed since the last time I was on and I don't even know if I have an editing software. So you're going to get this raw and uncut. This is real life folks. We're home quarantined from COVID-19. Today is March 21st or 22nd. Um, Sunday. March 21st or 22nd. Uh, 2020 and we are grinding about roughly seven pounds of beef Angus beef Angus premium beef stew meat oh it's so pretty comment down in the comment section and tell me what are some of the things that you like to do with ground beef. I don't often have beef. I mostly do um, ground turkey. And usually after the holidays when the turkeys are about 99 cent or less per pound. I thought I saw a splash. I did see splashes. Oh, it's splashing. Um, I am splashing. I don't like that. That means we won't have to mop. Um, whenever the turkeys go down in price, I will get a couple of turkeys and I'll let them unthaw and I will skin and debone them and then I would season them up. I do some patties. I'll do meatloaf. I'll go ahead and season it. Um, and then I'll either use my my um, vacuum sealer or Ziploc freezer bags, not sponsored. And I will label the bags, season um, ground beef. I'll say if it's turkey and I'll put the date. If it's meatloaf and I'll put the date. Spaghetti, I'll put the date. Um, and then the patties, my grandmother, my mom's mom, no matter when you would go to her house, she always had hamburger patties in the freezer door. So whenever she bought her ground beef, she'd go ahead and season it up, pat it out in the patty. She'd put it, she'd, she'd always keep the tray from the, from the store, the butcher tray. And she'd wash it up and she'd pat out those burgers they were always so good onions and oh my god delicious and she let them just get firm and then you know i don't know what kind of internal clock she had because i i can only think of one time they they froze solid and she had to have gotten distracted and and mentioned it which is why i remember but she would let them firm up enough where you could pick them up whole and she would stack them in bread bags because you know she didn't by Ziploc. So she would freeze them in bread bags and she would double bag it and they were always in the freezer door. So whenever we came to visit or stay over, we could always get a fresh burger. It was, it was great. So through the years as I raised my children, I did do that. I've done a couple different things. Consistency is the same. Um, 
but also I'm just talking while we're doing this because this is slow so if you got something to do you can just listen and yeah pass the time but at any rate um the best I've done is whenever I have gone to the store and I've separated my meat or ground meat and I went ahead and browned my seasoned spaghetti meat or taco meat and after it was drained I stored it in the freezer bag or in the food saver bag and froze it. So then when time came for dinner after work or on the weekend or whatever, even if the kids were home and they were going to do it, then it was already ready. It was just a matter of letting it unthaw and heating it up and cooking the noodles or whatever. And I remember being so proud of myself, but consistency, y'all. Mm. So much to do consistency and now I'm just I can't tell you what I'm not doing so I'm gonna let my camera person pull the camera off the tripod here so that you can come over and see this in full action oh my god I don't like the splashing I wonder why all of it doesn't splash so right now I have it on about number three for speed it's not splashing a lot, but it is splashing. So, he's getting in position. I'm going to wipe up some of these splashes. And, maybe rinse the soap from my hands. And so, you see how pretty that is? Now, I'm going to let him come up top. And kind of let you see. I'm going to put it in the tray. And then I'm going to start kind of dropping it down in the hole there. Try not to jam it. You don't want to put too much in there too fast. Because there's it, it, it creates some kind of suction or something. So, just a few pieces there. If you can see down in there. Probably can see better than I can right now. And then come down here and see it come out. not great look at that now that smaller dial that I showed you it will grind it up very small and it I did it by accident the last time I did turkey it was too small and it was mushy so I did a few um, turns of it with the smaller one and it comes out a little bit faster uh, when I press um, but when and a little bit of it with it ground small and then the rest of it ground with this um with this particular um tool with the larger holes is what i'm trying to say it digested so well and i mean it was ground turkey so you know it's already lean it doesn't have a lot of fat and all that good stuff in it but it digested so well so i i kind of feel like you know, it was a nice mix to do it a little, I'm going to say for lack of a better, overground. So I like that. So what I'm going to do here now, I'm not going to season this meat up, I don't think. My mind may change. But for right now, I don't think I am. I think I'm just going to grind this up and separate it. So guys, this bowl here, okay, me. This bowl, my pamp pamper ship, where did that come from? This is a Pamper Chef kitchen, by the way. I used to sell Pamper Chef, so I got a lot of it. But, what I say? Barely, right at about seven pounds of ground, I mean of um, beef stew meat. This bowl is the largest KitchenAid bowl, if I'm not mistaken. And it is nearly full. And I still have a good bit left. See here, I still have a good be bit of meat left. And this bowl here is just about full. So, I don't know if the weight is equivalent when you grind it versus in chunks, but I have definitely stretched out my dollar, which makes me very happy. Because I think this was about $35 worth of ground meat. And the thought of that almost made me nauseous about 30 minutes ago because I didn't add it up when I was buying it. I added it up when I went to do this video. 
Um, so, I'm not a cheapskate or anything, but I am cautious on how I spend money because I want to get as much out of it as I can. And on a, a regular basis, $35, that's a lot. But, you know, again, we're dealing with scarcity and you know, the idea of losing my option to be able to go to the store to get what I want or what I need when I'm ready um, creates, you know, what we got going on. And I think a lot of people have done that. I've watched a few videos. Um, I think her name is um, Jennifer Chapin. I watch her a lot. Um, and, you know, we've all gone in the store. We. You know, you're going to get one or two things since this has been going on, and you end up with more than you went in for simply because you notice the options decreasing. And we have grown to love our options, and we don't want those options taken away from us. So I probably have more than enough for 30 days. But one thing I'm not going to be is called short. And I don't want you to be caught short, which is why I'm taking the time to share this with you. It doesn't take very long to do this. Again, I'm doing it at a three. You can speak up a little bit, but like I'm, I'm shielding some of the splashes I see on the counter. This is raw meat. I don't want little fat splashes of blood, meat juice, all over my kitchen. So I'm doing my best to contain that. And like I said, that means that some mopping is going to have to... Your collar. Look in that bag. I thought we bought an extra card, as a matter of fact. I have several cards. It's which? What do you mean which is which? This is an adapter, never mind. You looking for splashes? Safe to record over these cars? Huh? Is it safe to record over these? What you mean record over? What's on it? That's what I'm saying. I don't know. We had to know what's on it. Alright. Do I, I, uh, I'm supposed to turn it off first, right? Yes. Well, the camera should already be on when you get back. Turn the camera Is that all of it? Yeah, that's all All right, guys. Amateurs. 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 Well, that's okay. So, my SD card ran out, got full. So, I had to put another one in. So, um, I'm done grinding. I've already washed Grandma Jessie's bowl. And um, I'm going to just disassemble. But look how full this bowl is. I wish I could remember right now the size of this bowl but yeah so I'm gonna just kind of take my finger my hands are still clean and I'm just going to clean it off then I'm gonna unhook it come out of there ah. all right and then what I'm gonna do here you can see that that's meat that's inside of there. So I'm going to take my hand, my finger, and I'm just going to kind of run it around in there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to just 
get that out of there because I don't want to waste any of my $35. And the same thing right around here if I can get that. I'll get that off of there too. One thing I like about this is that um uh oh is that it's plastic which makes it easier to clean. Um some of the I want to say I've seen this attachment in the stainless steel which I'm sure is also easy to clean. I got this attachment free uh, with the purchase and this is I'm going to not put that in there. I guess that's fat. I don't want that. I'm not going to gross anybody out to hang it up there because I know some people are not into the whole meat thing. So um, but yeah, I got this attachment free with the purchase of my KitchenAid. And so the plastic is what they gave. So this inside comes out and I'm going to put it in my bleach and soapy hot water. And I'm going to let it sit there for a few minutes. Clean my finger off. And I, I, I don't think I'm going to season it. I think I'm just going to label the bags. I don't feel like I pull, I do not feel like pulling out the food saver. Probably should, but I'm not gonna do it today. Um, prayerfully, I won't regret that decision. I like that thing, but it's not that easy to use to me. Um, I don't have any practice, and I don't have anybody in my social circle or in my family that really is interested in any of these kinds of things which is why i'm sharing it with you hello friends new friends and so um i have nobody to ask or help me with the food saver i like it um but sometimes when i do wet items they squeeze out and then of course i'm trying to save the length of the bag and maybe that's a user error which i went out of all it was user error but at any rate look at what we got this is a big bowl i wish they told me uh, it doesn't say the size of this bowl but this may be because i like to buy large things because i never know so i know it's not six quarts maybe eight quarts or yeah maybe so but this is a lot of ground meat and it's beautiful it is beautiful so I'm going to separate it in the bags and that really concludes what we've got going on. I'm going to put my nose back in here before I forget it. And um, like I said guys, this is just an alternative to saving, saving a little bit of money, stretching your money. This is something you can do all year long. This, if you have somebody in your family that is willing to do it for you, maybe you can purchase it and they'll grind it for you. And maybe you can give them a couple of bags. Um, like I said, when the turkeys go on sale at the end of the holidays, we have gotten them as cheap as $0.25 cent a pound, which is also when you're getting a 15 and 20 pound turkey. And you just skin it, you debone it, and you cut up that meat where it will get in the, in the little um, thing here. And you just grind it on up. Um, there's a lot of YouTubers that tell you how to debone and cut away the meat from the turkey. I looked at several. Mm -hmm. And they'll tell you how much fat to leave and how to notify, how to identify those parts or pieces that you don't want, like the tendons and different things like that. But at any rate, I hope this was helpful. It was good to be on camera again. And happy grinding. Bye-bye. All right, guys, I decided to go ahead and pull out the food saver. So I ended up with five bags of ground chuck or ground stew meat, beef. Um, and I weighed each one, so they're just over a pound each. So the total was seven. What was it? seven point something pounds um i thought my assistant was listening but i guess not so um they look great 
all vacuum sealed and ready to go in the freezer. So I will drop these in the deep freezer, which freezes um, better or is meant to hold it longer than the indoor fridge freezer. And um, sometimes I will go ahead and still put them in a freezer, a Ziploc freezer bag, um, just because I do I have a phobia of um, freezer burn, or maybe I shouldn't say a phobia. I just take the extra precaution. That's just who I am. So um, this is the food saver that I used. And these were pre-cut bags, so I didn't have to um, cut them myself. And um, I thank you for watching. And this is Mrs. D6 signing off. Bye-bye.